I don't see the cart moving, ladies. Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite albums. And today, I'm gonna do a double album review. Uh, let's go. So, um, yeah. Uh, these two albums that I'm gonna be talking about are two albums that are not that well known, but I listened to them anyways because I was interested in them. The first one will be Ace MoMA's A New Dawn, and this album was actually released a long, long time ago, back in February 2020. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've listened to this album for many, many, many times now, and um, I actually quite enjoy it. I, I think it's actually not a bad album, not at all. So Ace MoMA is actually a duo between Ace Mo and MoMA Ready, both artists from New York and together they are a drum and bass house duo and uh, yeah uh, one thing that I dislike about this album is that it's not a very versatile album it's actually kind of a repetitive album there are tracks on this album that sound really similar with one another and uh, there are also tracks on this album that remain in the same style for the entirety of its duration. So it's a bit of a repetitive album, and this album is also not a very sonically adventurous album. Uh, this is basically Boiler Room, the album, if you're into drum and bass. But as far as drum and bass goes, I think a good handful of tracks on this album are actually pretty enjoyable. I think the first two tracks of the album, The Elder Trans and Hidden Memory, are not one of the more memorable tracks on the album. They are just okay, especially for the intro, which is just kind of tame, kind of mild. And then we have tracks like Rubber Band Man, which has the punchy beats, the eerie synths, and the very glitchy keyboards, which I kind of appreciate. The track Amen to Swing is also one of my favorites on the entire album, with its clanging metallic bowls, its very sinister, loud, noisy, growling bass, as well as its speedy keyboards, which shows up towards the second half of the track. And the track Focus is also one of my favorites on the entire album. It is very tight and coherent. And uh, what I really like about this track is the warped swirling keys, or at least I think they are the keys, which sort of shows up in the halfway point of the track, which is very uh, disorienting and, and warping, and it sounds really cool. The track Start the Riot is, um, yeah, probably my favorite on the entire album. I mean, the very tight, hard-hitting drum hits are fantastic. And then we get layers upon layers of drums, especially towards the end when the drums sort of speed up and gain momentum. They are, they just sound really fantastic, really crispy, clear, at the same time kind of chaotic, kind of cacophonous while having order at the same time. The track Rave Masters as well as the title track. Uh, I also enjoy these two tracks. Both of these tracks sort of give me Death Grips Government Plates vibes because of the very hypnotizing, somewhat futuristic synths. And the track Breathe In, while I didn't enjoy it the first few times I listened to it, but it had grown on me so much because I kind of like how echoey the soundscape is sort of being created on this track. I also like the very disjointed vibe of the track. Aside from that, I think the track Distant Peak is also a pretty good track with its very bold, cascading, loud synths. Uh, but other than that, the tracks Golden Loop and Disrupt the System are pretty stale in comparison and not all that interesting. So yeah, overall, while there are a good handful of tracks on this album that I really enjoy, I still think it's um, it's an okay drum and bass album overall. It's not like it's breaking new ground or anything. So yeah, I'm kind of feeling a uh, strong 7 to a light 8 on this album. Yeah, light 8. Uh, why not? And my favorite track here is Start the Riot. And my least favorite is probably the last track. Golden Loop. The Golden Loop. Yeah. The second album that I'm going to be talking about is the uh, album from Greg Fox, and that is Contact. And I was actually kind of interested in this album because I am... Um, because this uh, the description of this album is very interesting to me, and that is that this is an avant-garde drumming album. An avant-garde experimental drumming album. This album is a drum album, so if you're into, you know, percussion, uh, this album would be interesting because 
this album is pretty much a full-on percussion album and um, in a way it's very uh, avant-garde and strange so uh, yeah Greg Fox uh, also from the USA contact and this album didn't blow me away unfortunately but however I still think a good handful of the tracks on this album also sound kind of interesting and um, yeah there's that the album opener of the Dana uh, at first I thought wow it, it sounds pretty interesting with the with its you know metallic gongs and, and all sorts of metallic sounds that came out of this track and then I was like wait why does this track sound very similar and then I realized that this track is basically the soundtrack to Breaking Bad. It's basically the Breaking Bad soundtrack. Next up, we have Arising and Passing with its walls, constant walls, waves of drum noise, just very speedy drums. But it's just okay overall. It still sounds very disjointed, not much of an idea going on. And we also have three tracks on this album, also called Contact. But the first one being Sucha and Somanasa, and the second track being Duja and Domanasa, and the last track being Upecha. And uh, all of these tracks are raw drum pieces with nothing but silence, and then on top just a drum set. And I guess in a way it sounds kind of entertaining. In a way it sounds like we are only being subjected to drums and only drums and we need to somehow I guess make sense of it uh, so there's that the track Paresthesia is a bit of an atmospheric ambient track except it doesn't create all that much of an atmosphere in my opinion it doesn't create all that much of a vibe again as far as an idea goes I don't really see any idea and then we have another atmosphere track called Ill Being and this one it's better than paresthesia and that it has more of a feeling to it more of a lost and confused feeling to it and i i guess i i think the uh musically i think this track is more dense and uh, more solid than the uh previous atmospheric track that is paresthesia um yeah and then we have the second to last track from the concession of what uh, which is this eight and a half minute long track with all sorts of strange percussion very shaky sounds I, I i don't know every percussion instrument ever but like there's this shaky sound where you twist it and it goes cha 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 that's on this track or at least i think it is and then towards the end of the track we get these very scratchy xylophones or or whatever melodic percussion that is and i thought wow that gives this track a lot of personality and a lot of texture and i like that sound a lot but uh, yeah overall it doesn't feel all that much of an album uh, but more of a collection of um, sound textures to me and why a lot of the sound textures on this album sound interesting and somewhat entertaining i don't think um this album is all that groundbreaking or mind-blowing or anything so yeah I am kind of feeling a decent 7 on this thing, light to a decent 7. My favorite track here is uh, from the concession of what my least favorite is, probably um, Paresthesia. So I have a listen to these two albums from one to time, which rate them, like if you like them, and subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching.